Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Mortis here and welcome to the introduction to Secret Hitler. Secret Hitler is a board game that got kickstarted by Max Temkin, one of the creators of Cards Against Humanity. It is a social deduction board game in which you have the fascists and the liberals trying to either impose the rule of Hitler or squash his regime. So the main reason why I'm making this video is because I'm trying to get the Ars Co-op Night crew to play it with me on Tabletop Simulator. And hopefully the information that I provide here will also give you the opportunity to decide to give it a try because it is, it is just a fantastic board game. I love the hell out of it. I've been playing it quite a bit and I just want to instill the wisdom that has been given to me since I came into the board game knowing absolutely nothing about it and the people who I played with gave me the rundown. This is a game that can support up to 10 players, but because of the limitations of Tabletop Simulator, we can only play with 8. So, we don't really need this 10 player pack, we don't need the 10 player board over here, we also don't need the 5 or 6 player board here because we're going to try to have a full 8 game. So, what I'm going to do through the power of editing is get the whole board set up so you can see exactly what's going on. So, let's go ahead and do that now. And there we have it. All right, so here is our setup. We are gonna go ahead and pass out our cards. These each contain four cards. You will have your yay vote, your nay vote, your faction card, and your roll card. Go ahead and get rid of you here. So we're just gonna pull these out here real quick. Normally what you would do is you would put them into your personal card slot. And the reason why you do that is because then you can flip it over and it is invisible to anyone else but yourself. I can show you that right here. Do, 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 do. So, in this particular instance, I am Hitler. Well, would you look at that? The first try, I'm already Hitler. So you can see Hitler is a lizard person. Figure that one out. Uh, then you have your roll card, which will tell you either fascist or liberal, and that will come into play later. Then you have your yay and your nay, or rather your ya ja and your nine. So, once everybody is doled out, which we shall do right now, there we are. Now, as far as the rules go, the fascists, there will be in a eight player game, there will be two fascists and one Hitler. The fascists can know who each other are and who Hitler is. Hitler cannot know who the fascists are. So at the beginning of the game, you will have everybody put out their roll cards face down, obviously, onto the table. Like so, like so, like so, like so, like so like so, and finally, like so. Then you will have everyone blindfold themselves, which is B. There we are. Now, the host is gonna have to play the uh, moderator on this, basically. So, as the host, you're able to see if people are blindfolded or unblindfolded, so you make sure everyone is blindfolded before you put yours on. Then you tell only the two fascists to raise their blindfold and flip everybody's card. This allows them both to figure out who each other are and to find out who Hitler is. They have about 60 seconds to do so. You can give them however much time you want. But at the end, you ask them to flip all the cards back over and then give a couple of pings on the table by holding tab and left clicking. Then everybody brings their... Hang on a second. There we go. Get the grab back. Then everybody brings their blindfold back up, takes their rolls, and the game can begin. So the win conditions for this game are as such. The liberals need to get all the way up their liberal track to this final card. That is one way that they can win. The other way that they can win is to kill Hitler. The fascists equally have to get up their fascist track to get up to the top card. Alternatively, they have to get Hitler voted into power. But this only comes at a certain point of the game. There are also two bullets available, which are once again later in the game, that you can actually take out a player. Now the nice thing about this is the fact that the players that get taken out will not get taken out until pretty much the end of the game. So they're not really going to miss much. It's not going to affect their gameplay. They're not going to get out so early that they don't have any fun. Uh, so what we're going to start with is the president. So what we would do is we would roll and say, who will be the president? And it will be eight. Well, eight is pink. So we will give the presidency to pink. The president now decides on who they want their chancellor to be. So the chancellor has decided, they say, I want green to be chancellor. And then everybody votes. You take your card, you put it face down. Once everybody has put theirs face down, you flip it up. If it's a ya, yeah, then this person has become chancellor. If it is a nine, 
and it's the majority vote, obviously, then they do not become chancellor. The chancellor goes back into the pool and the next person becomes president. But let's say for the, uh, for the interim, this person has become chancellor. The next step is to use the fascist and liberal cards. So the policy cards, there are six liberals and 11 fascists. You put them together like so. We'll go ahead and give them a flip and a little shuffle. There we are. Fantastic. And maybe a little more shuffle. Nope, that's just one card. One second. Do, 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 do. There we are. Right. So the president now draws three cards. Now, the way that you can do this in tabletop is that you hover over and press the number three. That will draw you three cards. Now, you have as the president to discard one card. You have to make the choice of what two cards you were going to pass over to your chancellor. So in this particular instance, say if I wasn't Hitler, I would go ahead and flip over a fascist card. They have to be face down. Put it in the discard pile. Grab these other two and pass them over to my teammate. Now, I can't do this right now just for the simple fact that these are not actual players, so it won't accept the cards. But they then take them into their hand, flip them over, go, okay, which one do I want to play and which one do I want to discard? And that's the way that you kind of deduce what team they're on. So we'll go ahead and say that this person over here is a liberal, so they would want to play a liberal, liberal policy. So we'll go ahead and put that there and we'll put the card there. Then everybody's happy. They go, ah, oh, they played a liberal card, so they must be good. No, they're playing They're playing us for fools. They're inherently evil. Blah, 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 blah. But anyways, then the presidency moves on to the next person, which is me. The chancellorship comes back over to me. I get to choose. This person was previously elected chancellor, cannot be elected again in a row. And the previously elected president is here. So it is now my turn to decide who goes next. Well, I'm going to say purple. Purple is my chancellor. Everyone says, yeah, fantastic. I draw three cards. Hang on. Well, I drew three fascist cards, which is fortuitous because I'm Hitler, so I'd want to give them fascist cards anyway. So I would go ahead, not rotate, but I would flip. Gotta finish learning the buttons here. Grab the other two, flip them face down, put them over here, give them to that person. That person would flip them over, go, oh crap, and put one down here and put one over here. Now, at any point in time, the players can ask you, what did you give them? What did you discard? And you can tell them whatever you want to. In this particular instance, I would say I had three fascist cards, so I had to discard one and give them two. They can confirm it or they can deny it. Now, at the same time, when you are deciding what cards to give, the president and the chancellor cannot speak. That is an inherent rule, not allowed. So once we get past a few turns, you start getting into this point where you get to the specials. So when you have fascist cards, the first one, the president gets to investigate a player's identity card. So if another fascist card, and we know that one of these is fascist, so we'll go ahead and put that there. Another fascist card is done. I get the opportunity to investigate somebody. As Hitler, I don't know who the fascists are, so I actually want to find them. But as a liberal, I would want to find the other fascists. So what I would do is say, uh, let's see, yellow, I want to investigate you. Yellow would give me their identity card, not their secret role, their party affiliation card. I would take it into my thing, flip it over and go, ah, they're a liberal. Fantastic. I'd give it back to them. They'd be happy. I'd know things. People would ask me and I'd say, oh yeah, they're totally so-and-so. And of course you, the whole social deduction thing, you can go back into lying and, you know, BSing and trying to get your way through that. So. Let's say that we get a third fascist card on the board. Oh darn, shucky darns. Now we have what is called, oh, hang on, hang on, there we go. <laughs> what we have is called the Pix the Next Presidential Candidate, which means that as the president, you get to choose the next person regardless of sequence. The way that this works is you get to choose somebody and everybody votes for it. Once that goes through, if it's a yay, then so be it, and they get to choose the chancellor and so on. If it's an A, it goes on to the next person in the turn. However, even if it's a yay, the next person in the turn is the next president regardless. So you can't go back and start all over again. You also don't want to do it like this. Okay, so let's say uh, you, this is what's called a power play. This person gets the presidency, passes the chancellorship over to that person. That person would then next turn get the presidency, so that's a power play. You don't want to do that. But in this particular instance, we, uh, we're not too worried about it. Now, the other thing that you have to worry about is once you get to this point, 
you also have to announce if you are Hitler when you are uh, appointed chancellor. If the chancellor is appointed after three cards is on the field, then the fascists win the game, pure and simple. So you basically have to say, yes, I am Hitler, or no, I am not Hitler. You don't have to say if you're a fascist or a liberal, just yes or no, I am Hitler or not. If you are not Hitler, you will get one of these shiny cards that just basically says, you're not Hitler. So put that down there. This person, totally not Hitler, confirmed. That doesn't mean they're not a fascist, that just means they're not Hitler. Once we get a fourth card down on the board, the president now has the ability to kill a player. So you get to decide who dies. You die. So that person is now out of the game. They can still talk because, you know, it's just kind of a thing. But generally, you... Well, I don't know. Some people are opposed to the dead talking. Other people don't care because it's still fun. They still get to participate. So it's kind of house rules at that point. Uh, obviously, if they get all the way up to here, they win. If they get to... Or if they get Hitler voted in after three cards, then they also win. Liberals... You only have one option. Get all the... Well, I'm sorry. You have two options. Get all these cards or shoot Hitler. That's it. Those are your only two ways of winning. So, these confirmed cards and the way that you play these cards are super important to trying to delve into who is who. Now, there is one thing that you can also do, which is kind of dangerous, but not at the same time. Say you got four liberal cards here and you got three fascist cards. Well... You still don't know who is who. You don't want to take the opportunity and shoot somebody, or you don't want to give the president an opportunity to shoot somebody because you don't know what their affiliation is. So what you can do is you can hang it. If you vote nine, this little beacon here moves up one. And if you get it all the way up to here, you reveal the top policy, and whatever the top policy is gets placed on the board immediately. Now, if you have four up here, and you only have three up here, that's a pretty safe bet. But you may still get a fascist because there's more fascists than liberals. However, if you got four here, you really don't want to hung it. Just not a good idea. So that's... That's basically the rules. There's probably a lot of nuances that I have been missing here because... Honestly, I am... Whoops. While I've been playing this for a little bit, I am still not completely versed on it. It's just, uh... Something that you have to learn as you go, but it's absolutely an enjoyable... It's an enjoyable thing. I'm gonna go ahead and fire everything off here. There we go, there we go. Do, do, do. Ah, what the hell. So yeah, that's Secret Hitler. It is a fantastic, fun little game. It doesn't take very long to learn. And you will have an abs... Goodbye card. And you will have an absolute joy when you are playing it. Goodbye. So with that in mind, thank you very much for watching. Adios.